Hey guys, Erica Lasan of ericalasan.com here for another episode of Journey to Purpose. Happy Juneteenth, because that is what it is today. I hope that you guys are enjoying some cookout, some good foods, and really just spending time with some friends and people that you love. But above all, I hope that you're enjoying your freedom. Let's talk about it. Today we are going to be talking about exactly that. The joy of freedom. Freedom at its finest. And how your identity actually puts you on path for living your life in freedom. And obviously because you guys know I'm going to talk about it. Living your life in joy. <laughs> As we're talking about freedom at its finest, we are gonna be concentrating on your identity because how you identify yourself, let me tell you guys, is really what gives you power and how you're actually able to manifest the dreams and the desires of your heart. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a couple of key things that you can do to establish your identity and joy so that you can really appreciate and live out your freedom at its finest. You guys ready? Let's hop in. Let's talk about the power of your identity. Your identity and how you identify yourself is so much greater than how people generally see you. The power in identity is that it really influences then how you become and what you become because your identity has the power to influence your mindset. Your mindset then has the power to influence your actions and your actions then have the power to influence the decisions that you make and how you really show up in the world. All of those things really lend to then supporting that identity that you've created for yourself. Are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? But the beautiful part about crafting your identity and your purpose and joy is that you get to choose. Your power is your identity and your power is your purpose. You guys know that I always say this, but understand that the moment you're able to anchor yourself and establish an identity that is really grounded in your joy, that's the moment that you're able to tap into the freedom. And it goes beyond really engaging with the simple roles and titles that you get um, or that you live out in your everyday life. I know that me personally, Part of my journey to purpose was coming to understand myself beyond the roles and titles that society, the world, um, my culture and my tradition put on me. Um, that of being a mom, that of being a wife, that of simply being um, a woman. You know, I'm so much more than that. But it wasn't until I truly began to anchor myself in my identity as a child of God that I was able to fully engage with the freedom of my identity, my purpose, and ultimately, my joy. <laughs> it was then that I was able to like let go of all of the noise and let go of all of the other things that um, other people expected of me or that I thought that they, they'd expected of me. And I was really then able to focus on living out my purpose. And my purpose is to help you all find joy. I say it all the time. <laughs> and I do this in a number of ways. My daughter Aria wants to say hi. Hi. Okay, bye. I said bye. <laughs> Back to what I was saying. And the reason why I was able to really let go of those things and embrace the, the freedom that came with establishing my identity in Christ was because I knew that no matter what, God loves me. Like really and truly, that's the reason why he sent Jesus Christ down. Establishing myself in that truth has really allowed me to go forward in each day, living out my mission in joy. Understand that the foundations of your identity matter. Those foundations then influence how you identify yourself. And if it's something where you're taking on identities that have been created for you or expectations that have been laid out for you, then you'll find that eventually you will become unfulfilled. <laughs> you will find yourself in a position where you feel less than satisfied, but more than anything, you'll at some point have some type of an identity crisis. Trust me, I know all about it. I had mine at 23, and then I had it again at 30. <laughs> Thankfully, I made it to the other side. And with this, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys three ways to anchor your identity in joy so that you can enjoy freedom at its finest. And I gotta run through these quickly because apparently it is starting to rain. Where are you guys going? Nope. And also my kids are trying to walk off. <laughs> Let's get into it, shall we? So the first part in establishing your identity and joy is to know who you are and where you come from. Y'all, understanding your foundations is so important. And 
with this you also have to know and recognize that you are a div you're you're a miracle like seriously your presence here is a divine occurrence when you consider all of the things in the world all of the times in the world that you could exist that you're even listening to this none none of this is coincidence but also I want you to consider your ancestry and what it took for you to actually be here I was on Instagram a couple of days ago and I saw this really cool meme that I wanted to share with you guys and it basically was talking about ancestral mathematics and it it laid out the um, math that it takes to create one person doing these ancestral mathematics how many people had to exist in order for you to exist over the course of 12 generations you ready all right it takes two parents Abby your mom and your dad four grandparents eight great great grandparents 16 second great grandparents 32 third great grandparents 64 fourth great grandparents 128 fifth great grandparents 256 sixth grand great grandparents it's like a tongue twister 512 seventh great grandparents 1024 eighth great grandparents and 2048 ninth great grandparents it then goes on to share that to be born from 12 generations you needed 4094 ancestors over the course of 400 years in order for you to be here right now what's up yeah i wanted to say i i, I didn't do a big bubble for a raft okay Mommy, yes jace i feel some drops uh, yeah that's why i gotta get through this so we can go inside all right back at it when you take the time to consider those 4,000 plus people that it took for you to exist think about their stories and their lives the fact that they existed was a miracle but when you think about it you embody so much of, of your history so much of their lives and one day you'll be added to the legacy of your lineage when that happens what is it that you'll be passing down what is it that people will remember about you? What stories will you then transfer over to the people who come after you or the world? You know, in knowing that your life matters, you then begin to understand that your identity and your ability to create a life that you love and living your purpose really does matter. Sometimes when I think about the things that I enjoy doing, I look at my parents, uh, especially my father, and I think about how much he's influenced me by really just sticking uh, to his identity and the things that he enjoys and the things that brought him joy over the years. Uh, my dad is an MC, or that's one of the many things that he's done. And I remember growing up and going to DC with him when we were younger and just watching him command a mic and really just em embrace the presence of being on stage and bringing people together in our Nigerian community and like making them laugh and bringing joy to the events that he would host and really allowing people to enjoy the times that we were together and sometimes when I think about some of the things that I've enjoyed learning about myself and parts of my identity that I've come to um, embrace or create over the years I think about how much my dad influenced me and I didn't realize it until maybe I was in my mid-20s just how much seeing my father as an entrepreneur and seeing him really just go after his dreams really impacted and influenced who I am and the belief that I could make it or that I could create a life that brought me joy. Understanding how your foundations are set and where you come from, it gives you the power to then understand who you are, but also what's possible. The second thing I wanna share with you guys in terms of how you can key in on your identity and enjoy freedom at its finest is to understand that while you are embracing your history, while you are coming to understand your history and accepting your history, cause that's totally a thing, know that you don't necessarily have to embody your history. If there is some part of your history um, and the foundations of your identity that don't serve you, check them leave them behind you don't have to take on those things for yourself the beauty in understanding your identity and establishing your identity is that you get to choose you have that power baby <laughs> if you don't feel inspired motivated or energized by some parts of your history or the identity that you've carried leaving up to this point you can do something different 
So for all of you people who may be watching this video right now and thinking, well, I can't do something because X, Y, Z, so-and-so, he, she says that I shouldn't or I couldn't do those things, know that that's not your story, or at least it doesn't have to be. You get to write your story. You get to be the captain of your own ship. You get to be the author of your own, well, I guess that would be story. Ultimately, you can't live for anybody else but yourself. While everyone may have suggestions to offer you or feedback to offer you about how you should be living or things that you could be doing, understand that they are speaking those things and stating those things from their own personal experience. Their experience is not your experience. Only you get to decide what your experience is and also, only you're the only person that will ultimately have to live with the decisions that you make about your own life. So take hold of whatever that vision is that you want for your life, however it is that you desire to identify yourself and really make sure that you're embracing the things that bring you joy. If it don't bring you joy, on to the next. And just because it was somebody else's story doesn't mean it has to be yours. Capiche? <laughs> the third thing I'm gonna share with you guys about living in your freedom at its finest is to choose joy. I mean, you guys probably figured that that was coming, right? Honor your freedom by living in your purpose. Everyone has one. You have a gift, you have a talent, you have something that only you can do and in a way that only you can do it. Okay, there's so many people that do a lot of the same things, but not everyone has your experience. Not everyone is able to deliver it in the same way to the same people. And with that, understand that you also have a responsibility to live in your purpose. This identity that you're crafting, this identity that you're establishing yourself in, isn't solely for you, but it's so that you can really show up and serve others in a way that contributes to your legacy. So what are you doing to do that now? You get to be, do, and have whatever it is that you want. Anything that you desire is ultimately available to you. But understand that having clarity in your identity and how that contributes to your purpose will help you get there faster because then you're not going all over the place and you're not feeding into the desires of others. You're not feeding into the stories of others. You're not feeding into the expectations of others because you are crystal clear on what your mission is. And we spoke a little bit about missions last week, right? Having clarity around your identity will then help you implement habits, strategies, and methods that will help you live out your purpose. Because again, your identity and how you see yourself or at least how you want to see yourself ultimately influences how you actually then behave it influences your mindset your mindset influences your actions and your actions influence the life that you create for yourself point blank period so I would love to encourage you guys to think about that. If you're gonna be here <laughs> on this earth while you are on this planet, you might as well be doing something that you love. You might as well be creating a life that you love. When you look back at the end of your life, what is it that you wanna see for yourself? What is the, vi the vision you would have hoped to create for yourself while you were here? They're back. It's not even on. Okay, bye. identity as a mom this is what it is when you try to get work done and then they're off we are coming to the end of this but I just want to leave you guys with this because it's something that came up for me as I was doing my devotions this morning I was reading a scripture in Psalms Psalm 137 and um, as I was reading it I couldn't help but think about today being Juneteenth granted my parents came over here <laughs> on a plane from Nigeria, but just understanding the history of slavery and the fact that for so many years, so many black Americans had their identity stripped of them and they were forced to take on an identity that was not their own. One of the greatest things that we can do as individuals, especially as African Americans, black Americans um, in this country, is to create the identity for ourselves that we desire. For so long, black people didn't have the ability to 
say who they wanted to be or even decide how it was that they wanted to live their life. But here in this space and time, we have that power. Your life is a song. What is the melody that you're creating? And if you're gonna sing it, sing it like you mean it. Don't be a one hit wonder. Live out your life as though it's a song that will stand the test of time, okay? So here we go. It is Psalm 137 verses one through six. And it says, by the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I not, do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. You guys, the best thing that you can do, the best way to pay um, homage, if you will, to your ancestors and your heritage is to understand that right now you get the gift of really and truly enjoying freedom at its finest. Freedom that they would have killed for, freedom that they died for, freedom that they wished and desired for you. Right now, you have access to all of that. Make the most of it, okay? Um, and on that note, that is the end of this week's segment. Happy Juneteenth. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And while you're at it, drop a comment and... Mommy, come check. Check what? All right, fine, he won't leave. <laughs> if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'd love to hear what you guys are doing for Juneteenth. How are you celebrating today? How are you making your ancestors proud? How are you enjoying freedom at its finest? And by the way, if you are looking to rediscover, reestablish, or just reconnect with your purpose and identity and joy, head over to my site, ericalassan.com. While you're over there, you'll be able to find tips, tricks, and tools, along with a ton of resources to get you started on your journey to purpose, starting with step one, the joy quest. That's it, right? And with that being said, I'm gonna go, cause he is like my backpack. He will not leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> I hope that you guys have a wonderful holiday. Um, eat tons of food enjoy your freedom and i look forward to seeing you next week as we journey together one feel good thing at a time bye <laughs>